How the hell y'all doing? Shane here with Board Display Gaming back in my studio after a killer festival I just went on. Uh, Hell's Heroes, and I'm going to talk about it and break it down day by day for you real quick. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. I was originally supposed to go out Wednesday for the uh, pre-party and everything, but um, I had a last-minute panic attack and didn't want to fly. Just because I work in the fucking aerospace industry, quality, and I've seen some shady stuff. I still have seen some shady stuff, talked to people. Anyway, I don't like flying right now. It was just a last-minute thing. Maybe if I didn't work in this industry and I didn't see the things I've seen and how we've had to stop production on things because of government orders and all of that. Anyway, I'm not going to dive into that. I don't like flying. So we said we, uh, me and the girlfriend drove 22 hours <laughs> to Texas from LA. <laughs> and we didn't, we left at 11 on Wednesday, didn't get there till like three in the afternoon the next day, just driving straight. So Thursday, the first day was kind of a wash for me. Like I missed a lot of bands. I got maybe cut five full sets uh and then the fucking rain fucked everything up too for autopsy so they played a short set and autopsy was one of the bands i really wanted to go see but they played a killer set nonetheless uh but going back to it we showed up and door was on that was cool she did a whole warlock set uh it was raining here and there and then yeah then after her set thunderstorm and we're like fuck they kicked everybody out of the venue so then we went to the um brewery down the street which was cool there's a brewery not even like five minutes walking so if you go there the venue set up really nice you have uh outdoor lawn stage and then a big hill where you can hang out up on and then there's the indoor area where uh that was the second stage and then if you want there's places to go down the street for the brewery and they had really good food there but I would have to say, out of the sets I caught for Thursday, my favorites were Autopsy, uh, Candle Mass, and then the after party. I went to the Black Magic Social Club to catch Tanith, which was awesome. So here's some clips from that day. Alright, now moving on to Friday. Weather was much better. Uh, a little bit overcast. I started getting sunny. And my dumbass didn't bring sunscreen. I had to go put some on later. And I started getting real sunburned. It was like breezy. It was like 80 degrees. The weather in Houston's kind of like weird sometimes, I guess. It's, luckily, it wasn't fucking humid. Fuck humidity. That shit sucks. But Friday, I caught almost every band. I missed only two sets. I had to take a break. And it sucks. Like some of those bands I wanted to see, but like I could go through, give you a breakdown of each and every single one of these bands, but I'll just say look up the lineup for each and every single day. Every band on this lineup was worth seeing. This lineup was impeccable. It was a great lineup. They brought like Christian Larson, who I interviewed, uh, he put together such a well thought of and well curated uh, lineup between like death metal black metal you had some thrash in there and then you had some really in like kind of eclectic and like weird stuff like witch hazel which uh they played saturday but that was cool but going back to friday um i was stoked to see morbid saint i got to see eternal champion solitude eternus 
Uh, and then I got to see Hellstar because I missed them Thursday. They took the place of Agent Steel. And it was cool during the Hellstar set because they brought out the guitarist from Agent Steel and they did Agents of Steel with the song, which was awesome. Um, then you had like Watchtower. That was fucking cool. Uh, more like kind of like Voivod proggy stuff. But again, uh, Eternal Champion, I was so stoked for. Eternal Champion, Solitude Eternus, Morbid Saint. Those were my three sets of the day. Like... Queensryche played too. Queensryche was really good. They got the new singer. He's been with them since like 2012, 2013. That was cool. Um, but those three bands right there, that made the day for me. And then there was just, uh, you had some black metal stuff like Lamp and Mirror, which was awesome. I mean, I'm just going through this list and it's just so many good bands. I could sit here and talk about all of them. But, and then the after party went to go see uh, Persecutor, um, which was cool. LA band. So Friday was much better. Uh, it was a marathon, as these festivals are. You're running back and forth, getting beer, getting food, you know, trying to like, oh shit, I could go to here. Girlfriend was kind of nagging me like, fuck, slow down, you know. But I'm like, but the band is on. They're fucking on right there. We gotta go. <laughs> so that was Friday. Friday was a, a long day because I got there around like 1230, just about. So Friday, really good day. Uh, check out some clips. Saturday uh, was a really good day, too. I caught almost every single band except uh, Witch Hazel and Attic. Uh, you had the day started off great with uh, early moods. And, well, the day started off even better with good weather again. Um, early moods kicked it off. L.A. band. If you're in the kind of doomy, kind of heavy metal, traditional heavy metal stuff. Um, then you had Traveler. You had Bloodstar. And then, like... That, that lineup was so good. And then uh, my fav- my favorite sets of the day were probably Summerlin's uh, Sodom, of course, and or Demolition Hammer. Then you had fucking Tank, and you had Seerith Ungle. Like, my God, that was a good fucking day. It was stacked. Like, Tank, that was awesome. A lot of these bands on this entire bill were the first time I, I got to see them. And Tank was from the UK. I believe one of the members was in Motorhead for a bit. Um, I, I can't talk enough about Tank, um, Blood Guts of Beer, like, fucking great song, check them out, Demolition Hammer, Hailing from New York, Death Thrash, uh, Seerith Ungle, obviously, that was my third time seeing them, and, uh, it sucks, I hope everybody gets to see them before they stop touring, they said they're gonna stop touring, like, but, they just put out a new album last year, Dark Parade, which is really good, ah, fuck, uh, 
Sirathong will please go see them if they're coming to town. And then the Almighty Sodom. I waited fucking like shit, 15, 16 years since I was a kid almost um, to watch Sodom. And I never had a chance to see him until now. That's what sold me on this entire bill was just going to see fucking Sodom. Uh, it was absolutely amazing. Uh, they opened up with Among the Weird Kong from fucking m16 they even played surfing bird they played you know sodomized uh what didn't they play that set was just an absolute killer set and um i'm tempted to go see them they're actually coming to california at the end of the year uh up in oakland for california death fest so that might be something i might be hitting too because sodom like i can't get enough sodom <laughs> definitely um if you've never heard of Sonom, I don't know what's wrong with you, but you got to go listen to Sonom. <laughs> uh, anyway, like, check out some clips from that day. Fire. I don't know who the 
and then let me talk about some uh, pros and cons real quick uh, pros what i enjoyed about the festival was uh the convenience of everything there was a lot of stands to get beer i didn't really wait in long lines uh, the weather was great for the majority of it every band started on time there was no delays there was no sound issues i heard there were sound issues for girl school my buddy was telling me that was about it uh other than that like the lineup was great the food was amazing there was cool vendors on the side too but it got too much because it was like shit there was some guy selling them super rare vinyls there was all sorts of stuff there but i was like i don't fuck like i don't want to carry all this shit right now i did pick up a bunch of stuff though i'll do that in another video but this entire lineup was well thought of uh, i think uh christian larson couldn't have done a better job i mean he got back solitude at turn so that was fucking how are you gonna top that like come on i hope that reinvigorated them to do some new music and maybe they go on a tour that would be cool um yeah i, I just a, simply a fun festival i think it's shaping up to be one of the best festivals in the u.s uh for heavy music uh and you're gonna see some of the bands that you would never have a chance to see which was i mean come on like you couldn't pop this lineup um now going to cons i guess uh cons would be the weather's kind of unpredictable in houston so uh they usually hold around this time still so that you you might get like thunderstorms and rain so bring a poncho or something at least the mud sucked some of the grass area in front of the lawn uh, stage is fake grass so there was no mud but other places you're trudging through this mud and then like where the merch was there was just fucking they put down pallets you had to walk down but it was just fucking a mud field so that sucked um another con was merch itself that line was so fucking long and certain things they sold out of really quick they didn't have the right numbers of but i talked to one of the merch people and they said like yeah they kind of got fucked over on a lot of shit so it's like kind of sucks hopefully they address that next year and have more than just like two people working merch and then certain sizes like i wanted to get a, a hell's heroes tour shirt or the festival shirt but they sold out in 2x and i'm like a lot of this was slow and fat music and a lot of us aren't fucking small like how are you gonna sell out of the biggest sizes you know <laughs> those are the sizes you should have the most of um but that sucked um uh, other than that you know you're gonna pay festival prices for food like a standard meal was like 15 bucks beer was like 16 bucks but i was drinking lone star all weekend i was like nine dollars um trying to think of any other cons because there really wasn't many oh the indoor stage at white oak fucking needs ac in there that shit got so hot when they packed that shit in there it sucked and i guess that's what sucks too it's like some, there was some so many good bands on the second stage that if you didn't get there in time it hit capacity in there which ah, man that kind of i guess my only uh critique of that would be cool if they could add a second outdoor stage i don't know where they would put it actually so maybe no i don't know because uh hitting capacity in there i mean that kind of like didn't like it sucked because like some of the after parties i didn't get to go to because they hit capacity like that and if you didn't leave a song before the lawn to get in there you weren't gonna see them but other than that it but the venue was great um plenty of bathrooms uh although the bathrooms were like fucking like after the rain they were just a fucking mess so don't shit in those bathrooms uh the whole f fucking floor was just covered in mud and water um there was water things to fill up your water bottles there so that was cool but it was just simple things that you're gonna expect at every festival i mean i've been to quite a bit some run better than others this one was ran pretty well just the weather kind of fucked some things over but other than that the timing of bands was perfect um no major audio problems again so i uh, all in all i i would say if you get a chance to go to hell's heroes and hopefully that lineup is just even better than this one definitely hit up hell's heroes it's again 
one of the best uh, heavy metal festivals in the states, and I can say for a fact that um, I'll probably end up going again because it was that fucking good. So this is just my quick rundown of the festival. I hope you liked it. I have a bunch of other stuff. Uh, you know, do like, subscribes, and tell me if you guys win. Tell me what your favorite sets were. Cause I took. I, hey, rule of thumb though. I only take about 30 second clips. Don't sit there fucking recording like an hour long clip, you know. Sometimes I catch myself going a little bit too long because I'm like rocking out and hammered. But 30 seconds, that's all you need. One or two per band, you know. But um, let me know what you thought of the festival if you went. Let me know what you think of some of these bands. I'll post up some of the bands so you can check them all out. Um, the entire lineup is worth checking out. There wasn't a bad band on here. That That's the thing. Like, I only missed about... Well, I missed most of Thursday, and I missed maybe about, like, five bands between Thursday and... Or Friday and Saturday. It was it was the marathon. So, oh! And one more thing. If you do end up going, there's a Holiday Inn that's worth staying at. It's a walking distance. That's probably the best one. You would have to book it, like, soon. Probably, like, in the next few months if you're planning on going. Uh, and then you could just walk to the venue. I had to stay in the city at another Holiday Inn. But Houston has a Metro Link that gets dropped off right in front of there, uh, the venue. And I was too drunk to always figure it out because I was coming back at like 3 in the morning every day. And then like just jamming and fucking running there. But other than that, the festival is great. Check out all these bands. Check out all my stuff. Let me know what you think. Uh, until next time, everybody. Take it easy.